The main mission of our group, which is the Arizona Radio Observatory, is to build top-notch instruments for millimeter wave telescopes. And so we can bring the science and the instrumentation together in one location. This telescope was moved from New Mexico several years ago. The instrument is called the Major Research Instrumentation Four Band Receiver, or just the Four Band Receiver. It covers four different wavelengths in one receiver package, which makes it unique. It's important because at millimeter wavelengths, which is where this detector functions, we study molecular emission from space. This receiver detects an emission from rotating molecules that will tell us the chemistry and physical properties of our galaxy and other galaxies. This type of technology really pushes the limits of it, which uh, us radio astronomers and engineers have been doing for years and uh, working in these frequency bands, which commercial people have not been able to do. There are three big problems in astronomy. Uh, what does the universe do? What do stars do? And what does life do? And this is about stars, really, because we only understand what goes on inside stars from theory and this is a device that allows you to look at the stuff that comes out of stars and actually tell you about the nuclear reactions. This new instrument is really special because it opens up in a new frequency range that was previously unavailable at the 12 meter telescope. And this has thus opened up a new window for exploration of the molecular complexity of space, which allows us to deepen our understanding of how molecular material is formed and processed and destroyed as it's cycled from stars to the interstellar medium to new stellar systems. In order to build this instrument, we had to have a unique set of talents, which required us to go to different institutions beyond the University of Arizona, namely University of Virginia and the National Radio Astronomy Observatory. What I find exciting about this project is we have several different groups collaborating together, each with their unique talents. Mine is fabricating devices and chips. I'm director of the IFAB Innovations and Fabrication Clean Room Facility at UVA, and we've been working in instrumentation for astronomy for decades. At UVA, we have a, a clean room facility, which is renowned worldwide for developing detectors and receivers elements for radio astronomy observatories. Our clean room is full of devices which allow us to deposit, take away, or modify things on a chip. So think Intel, we're, we're building layers in a chip and circuitry. In collaborating with Lucy, we've developed chips to go in their receiver um, to, to realize their astronomy goals. I'm currently working at Franklin and Marshall College, but I originally became involved in this work as a graduate student at the University of Arizona, where I was working as a member of the Zuris group. I use radio telescopes to observe rotational transitions of molecules in space. Specifically, I'm using the new receiver at the 12 meter telescope to observe molecular transitions in dying stars known as planetary nebulae in order to study their molecular composition. And these observations have revealed an unusual enhancement of rare isotopes like carbon-13, which has provided us with insight into the nuclear reactions undertaken by the stars which form these objects, as well as hint at a possibly explosive past for these objects. The Van Horizon Telescope is a global collaboration that makes images of black holes. You may have seen our first picture of the black hole in the galaxy M87. This new instrument allows us to bring the telescope we have on Kitt Peak into the Event Horizon Telescope array. The EHT will be up to 11 telescopes now where we record light coming from black holes uh, on disks, bring them back to a supercomputer and play them against each other in order to synthesize an image at the highest resolution that humans have ever achieved. It's natural for this project almost to be at the University of Arizona. First, we have the telescope here. Second, we have a talented engineering staff that could build the instrumentation. So far, and it's only been a year or two, we've discovered organic molecules at the extreme edges of our galaxy, which is important for astrobiology. And we've also found that planetary nebula, very dead stars, are actually full of molecular material which has implications for how complex the chemistry can get in interstellar space. This instrument will have a big future in the area of the, studying the molecular universe, astrobiology, astrochemistry, and of course, black hole physics.